And now, from the dark corners of the internet, where exploits run wild, packets aren't the only things getting sniffed, and the beer flows steady, it's Paul's Security Weekly. Paul Security Weekly is brought to you by the SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training, certification, and research. Visit SANS.org to learn more. And by Tenable Network Security, the creators of Nessus, the world's best vulnerability scanner. Jumpstart your security program today and evaluate Security Center CV, the continuous monitoring solution. Visit Tenable.com to learn more. And by Pony Express, check out the Community Edition and turn your Nexus 7 into a lean, mean pen testing machine for all those hard to reach places. There's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at PonyExpress.com. Now, fire up a packet capture, pour yourself a beer, give your intern control of the botnet. I'm your host. A man who manages to identify every white whale in the security podcast industry whose wildest key sign... Oh, that's last week's. My wildest key signing party involved a 55-gallon drum of lube. Nice. Did you know that? Nice. We're here on episode 408 for March 5th, 2014. That's right. This is Paul Security Weekly. And look who's sitting to my right. None other... Then Jason Street, <laughs> welcome. What's that? What's that awkward. Uh, uh, huh? oh, 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 there's gonna be a body oh, parts oh. tonight. Oh, that's that was awkward get, for both get of a us. Room. Oh, that uh, wasn't <laughs> even the awkward hug. That was called the warm up. My hands were all. <laughs> all right. That was the we'll, warm up. We'll try again later. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> welcome, Jason, to the show. I'm just gonna introduce the rest of the cast and crew. Go through a few announcements, and Jason and I are gonna talk about some exciting things happening at Pony Express. And one of which is you can win a pwn phone. That's right. Ooh. Your own pwn phone. Like this one. I, I, oh, that was, that's, <laughs> that's actually yours. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, in that, there's the... Is that the... Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. Oh, oh turn, look you, how... You look how, it on. How, look at, yeah, we can... You know what? Does it turn on? It does. Yeah, it turns yeah. on and everything. Yeah. Look mm-hmm. at that. Is, it, is there a lock? It's not just a prop. No. Nope. Yeah. Is there? Oh, if there's no passcode <laughs> on it, Jason. <laughs> You're it's, supposed just, to- it's just for pony. There's no, there's no contact information on that. <laughs> Trust me, I, I don't want any identifiable, identifiable information on that at all. <laughs> But he he did just pwn your uh, laptop over Bluetooth, so... That's right. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Mr. Joff Thire is on the lines via Skype from... Well, it was sunny in 70 North Carolina. Now it's snowing like it is here? Or did it stop snowing? I think it finally stopped snowing. It is not snowing in North Carolina now, but uh, I think it might tonight. But yesterday it was sunny in 70 and it was beautiful and it was like such a letdown today. So mm. <laughs> it's good to be here, Paul, and uh, good to see you, Jason. Yeah. From uh, snowy Massachusetts, we've got Mr. Jack Daniel. Welcome, Jack. Thank you. It's wonderful here. White it's sandy a wind- beaches. No, wait, it's white. Winter wonderland? Uh, something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. It will never end. It'll never end. <laughs> Carlos Sorry, said, I'm not there for hugging in person, Jason. No, the, you'll have to make uh, up for it one. next time. Definitely. Carlos, do, has it, it's probably never snowed in Puerto Rico in the history of the planet, correct? Maybe during no, the Ice we Age. we've gotten some hail, but never snow. Never snow. So what's going on, Carlos? Doing good, doing good. I, I, I won't even mention the weather and that I have my AC on just not to make you feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look nice in pink, though. Actually, that color really works for you. Look nice. Mm. I like it. Thanks. Very, very sexy tonight. Um, not that you're not sexy every other night. He dressed up for me. He did. He did. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a brave did. man that can wear pink. Uh, yeah. Let's see. We've got a couple of announcements. Has the cold weather got you down? Well, I guess that doesn't apply. Yes. Because, yes, it does. Well, you can warm up to embedded device security assessments for the rest of us. That's a two-day class being offered at Black Hat USA this summer, taught by yours truly, Mr. Paul Asadorian. That's on August 1st through the 2nd and 3rd through the 4th. You can find out more and learn how to do combat reverse engineering firmware. We call it combat firmware analysis, Jason. That's what it is. So you can learn more about the course by going to securityweekly.com forward slash IOT where you can also register. Register soon because the price just goes up if you wait. So register today and save money. Already registering. 
Um, you, if you are registered for my <laughs> class, aren't you? You would do that to me. So, um, if you so when you buy that class, right, you get access to the Arsenal talks, which is going to be one on uh, Nmap and Nessus and oh, the Arsenal nice. talks. You get access to the vendor area. One other thing at Black Hat, not the briefings, but you get you can go to Black Hat. You get a pass right. to get you in, but just not to everything. Um, during the training, you get free lunch when you sign up for Black right. Hat training. Um, what else? And then you get the class and everything that goes with it. It was the free lunch I didn't, I didn't mention And the snacks. Year. They've got really good snacks. And they got really good snacks during the breaks, too. During the breaks. Yes, they do. Uh, Paul, are you sure you didn't mean NMAP and VI? NMAP and VI is really <laughs> what I what I meant, Joff. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so that's the securityweekly.com forward slash IoT. Go register today. Make sure you tune into my Tenable webcast. I'm making a special plug for this. Because I'm really excited. And secretly, I really just want to get over a certain number in registrations just for, like, bragging rights. So please go register for this webcast. It is called Eliminating Credential Headaches with Nessus Agents. We're going to be talking about Nessus Agents. My nice. presentation is it's nice. going to be fun. I mean, it's going to be fun. It's a lot of fun. I, I did a dry run of it today. I'm, I'm super excited about it. Awesome. So, there's a link in the show notes to register for that. You can also go to Tenable.com. Go to webinars, uh, and it's right there. Mine is the Americas one. So eliminate credential headaches using Nessus agents. Uh, I feel like I should channel Agent Smith right now. Neo. I don't. You know, I used all of my self-control job not to include a picture of Agent Smith in my presentation. Yeah, so there will be tough. no Matrix <laughs> references in my presentation. Not because they're bad, but because it's it's old, it's over, it's done with. I needed a different kind of reference. But oh, come on, ice cream my I have I have one picture of a secret agent that is absolutely hilarious, and you have to tune into the webcast to see what it's all about. How's that? All right. A oh, little teaser there, a little carrot, a little carrot. That's right. Speaking of little carrots, this is my new knife. This is oh, you know what? I can use this camera angle, can I? This is my new Ratworks. MRX Mini. I'm very excited. There's a Security Weekly listener that works for Ratworks based out of Illinois. And they were kind enough to send me one of these knives. This is a 2.995 inch blade, which comes under the regulations in Rhode Island of three inches to carry every day. Nice. And so, as you can see, it's an auto open. It is uh, it's Wicked Shop. I don't know what the... There's a whole... 154 CPM. It's chain, chain driven auto open. Yeah, did you see that? So like if you close it back up, there's actually a chain, chain driven auto open. This is to me, and I know a lot of us in security are like into like knives and stuff <laughs> like that, and knives and swords. Like I, I don't know few. what it is, but we <laughs> like a lot of us carry a knife on us every day, mm -hmm. right? Um, this has yeah. become certainly my new everyday carry. Uh, and again, it was sent to us by a listener from Ratworks Incorporated. And their website is RatWorksUSA, R-A-T-W-O-R-X-USA.com. I want to give a special thanks to them for sending me uh, this blade to carry out. I've been using it. It's awesome. Like I said, I mean, it's replaced some of my other big name brand so uh, jealous. everyday carry. Um, what's your everyday carry knife, Carlos? I know you carry a, a knife on your everyday. Uh, Emerson CQC8. Nice. Emerson makes good stuff. Oh, there. That's gigantic, yeah. though. See, I would get arrested if I carried that every day in, in, in Rhode Island. Um, yeah. I carry a carry bench. Uh, I used to carry a Benchmade, actually, every day, and I've switched to the, uh, the Ratworks one. So make yeah, sure you go man. check them out. And if you buy something, make sure you tell them you heard it here on Security Week. We're helping out our fellow listeners. Uh, he actually does computer security for, uh, for Ratworks. The retail on this knife is $325 and carries a lifetime warranty, which is... Uh, <sighs> I, I like it a lot. Uh, I'm the tactical guy in the team. Come on. I know. I know. <laughs> Everyone's jealous. That, well, maybe yeah. we'll, me, you haven't heard the last of Ratworks. Everyone else is drooling over the, the yeah, knife. Right now, on me, I have my Emerson, Phoenix, Flashlight, <laughs> Glock 19. <laughs> yeah, <you know. laughs> when all that's else fails, roll, by know? the way, I, is, is Glock 19. All his yeah. <laughs> Plus uh, an extra mag in my back pocket. I like how he starts off with the knife, then he goes to the, the flashlight, flashlight, and then, and then Glock okay, 19. Wait, well, the flashlight's yeah. not going to stop me. Okay, i got to go with the gun. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like the escalation path was a little misguided. It was. That's what I was thinking. Was. <laughs> Maybe flashlight, knife, gun. That's what yeah. I would have started. Yeah. You know? With like, one, I'm close in. I don't need to find you. With the other right. one, I need to find you first. Oh, there you go. There you go. 
good. <laughs> so uh, Jason Street joins us. Uh, the infosec ra- is that your title? They, no, that's not your official I title. I tell you straight out. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, right show here. me a business card right, right here, straight out. This is and this my... better be an official business card, not one you paid three dollars <laughs> for at Cafe Press. <laughs> They let me so, choose what title I wanted to have. I Which wanted, I, wanted I would security have warned them beforehand. <laughs> exactly. I wanted <laughs> Security Samurai, but they wouldn't let me go with that one. So I was like, okay, InfoSec Ranger. And they're like, okay, we'll do Jason, and I'm going <laughs> to – like I'll that. cover up the <laughs> other information, Jason. So I, can you get a close-up of that? Yeah, he is That's actually the, the InfoSec <laughs> Ranger, Ranger at Pony nice. Express and the author of the book Dissecting the Hack, The Forbidden Network, plus creator of Dissecting the Hack. He's spoken at DEF CON, BrewCon, UConn. At, not the university, but the yeah. conference, in uh, various other places. His life story can be found on Google under Jason E. Street. He's a highly carbonated speaker who has partaken of pizza from Beijing to Brazil. He does not expect anybody to be reading this far, but if they are, <laughs> please note he has chosen as one of Time's Person of the Year for 2006. You know what's really funny about that? It's like I read that far. I know people read that far, but there was actually, I was at a conference <laughs> in uh, Singapore. And it was a business conference, and they actually, the guy read the whole bio, and he got down to that part where he's like, and he changed his whole demeanor, and he's like, and he was Time's Person ah. of the Year for 2000s, and he's like, let's welcome, and it just he just got all like, and I, I didn't have the heart to tell him that <laughs> if you look at 2006 Time's Person of the Year, everybody was Time's Person of the Year for 2006. Oh, yes. It was that, you know, <laughs> yeah. that one where it was the cover was you, so I am legitimately the person's Time's Person of the Year for 2006, but that guy was just, I didn't want to break his heart, because he was just like, he's meeting the Time's Person of the Year for 2006. <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious, too. <laughs> I feel so, so bad. Uh, Jason, what, wait now. I'm going to have to call the uh, Pony Express support line and go, hello, my name is Joff. I'd like to speak to Ranger Jason. <laughs> Ranger <laughs> Jason. Paging <laughs> Ranger <laughs> Jason. That's how I actually answer the phone there. So, <laughs> so uh, Jason, uh, talk about, before you joined Pony Express, um, some of the things that you were doing in terms of penetration tests and describe some of your penetration tests mm-hmm. and then the things that you notice about where you're being most effective. Okay. Um, I think I, early on I realized uh, when it came to um, doing pen testing uh, that I didn't like doing the, the network-based attacks. It's like, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, can, I can run the installs. I can run the scans. I can look for, for vulnerabilities, but not very well. Not as good as – there's a lot of other people that are way more talented than I am at that. Uh, but – and also, but the main point that really got to me was the fact that it wasn't as fun. It's like it was like you're sitting at a desk and you're like having to, to – and it's cool to see it. and like, oh, look, I've got domain admin control. You're a people person, Exactly. Jason. And that, well, I like the excitement. I like being able to go out to places and actually break in. It's like I like being able to see the person and say, yo, well, I don't know how to actually, you know, maybe go onto that SQL database and grab that data. But I can take the hard drive from that SQL server and I still got the data. So I've always loved that part. So I like actually going to the on-site location, trying to find unusual, unique ways – and I mean, I always like to, I mean, I, I don't do like a whole bunch of the stuff, you know, where I don't use rats. It's like I don't go into uh, trying to look at uh, red malware code and, and, and install things to uh, break into people's systems. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just like being able to just walk in. And I tell people, it's like, I don't have to bypass your firewall if I can bypass your receptionist. Uh, and so that's what I've gotten known for. It's like I started out doing it by um, uh, researching social engineering. I don't have to penetrate your domain controller if I can. Oh, no, there you go. Exactly. That doesn't, no, that doesn't apply. Never no, I mean, I was going to ask, you, like, what if the receptionist is really, really good looking? Do you really want to bypass? I mean, well, you know, it's yeah. like, we, I usually <laughs> never had that problem. They, they're they usually pretty good at bypassing me. So it's like, uh, just igno- if I get annoying enough, they'll just let me go in uh, and be somebody else's problem. Uh, which actually I've done that before. Just been like really annoying and, and out of the way and just like, you know, oh, yeah, I need to get this. And they're like, okay, you can go in. Just, just stop being my problem. Uh, but yeah, so the uh, so I started doing that and I got really good at it. It's like uh, as far as I I I feel, it's like uh, and I started going more. So uh, I've gotten some companies that have gotten me to some really good places. I do uh, some pen testing with uh, Netroguard, uh, Krypton Security, <clears throat> uh, and especially with uh, Krypton, it's like I've done a lot of really good stuff from there. Uh, breaking into places like in uh, Beirut, Lebanon, Mont Jordan, Nicosia, Cyprus. And you think that I wouldn't blend too well in those places, but uh, still successful uh, at all those locations. So I like uh, I like just talking to people and then uh, stealing from them. <laughs> so you did, you did um, 
<laughs> a lot of thievery, apparently. Yeah. And you noticed, I, I think, when we were talking before the show, that the remote sites. Yeah. So it wasn't necessarily, uh, you're talking about physical penetration testing, right? right? And this has been my experience, right. too. But you've done a lot more of these than I think I have, right? Where the main corporate headquarters, they tend to lock that down oh. a little more. But yes. what you're finding and what you found doing a lot of these physical tests was the branch and remote offices right. were lower-hanging fruit. In terms of physical security. So yes. talk about some of your experiences there and how that comes together. In a, I in a actually, I'm doing a talk this year called uh, Breaking in Bad. Uh, I'm the one who doesn't knock. And I actually, one of the references I use is a, um, for an engagement that I did for a state treasury here in the U.S. And their headquarters, because it's a state treasury, right? It's like it's where the money is, was one of the very well fortified. They had very well compartmentalized uh, uh, public areas. Mm -hmm. uh, they had... Uh, video surveillance, the cameras were right in the right places. Their employee entrances uh, were well guarded and well protected. Uh, you couldn't just walk in off the street. So in other words, uh, or a fun. street couldn't walk in. Exa exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A street couldn't walk in there. It's like so. And I did a lot of uh, searching on the surface web uh, looking for uh, a, a likely t uh, second choice, uh, a plan B to go in there. And I realized that they did have a remote office. And it's like, it's the state treasury, but they have this remote office. Uh, now, did you just clean that up? You just went to their website and saw where yeah, their offices yes, were? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like everyone lists their remote offices but, on their website, which I, is pretty like funny. It's like a map. Web. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to do the uh, CSI cyber uh, uh, name game. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't watched CSI. I that's I what, watched that's Scorpion. why it's so much fun you to sneak the, the I, words I, in that you're not I realizing Scorpion I'm using them. I watched Scorpion and I'm scarred for life. That was horrible. So uh, I, I, I this right, one's I'll have worse. to watch this CSI. One's even worse. I've already had. I've already. It's used worse three of than them, Scorpion. Oh, ten times worse. No. It, oh my gosh. It's like. So you're a nerd. You obviously you're a nerd like me who Two watches words, those shows. Virtual teleport. That's 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 yeah. what got. We me. watched them to point out the technical inaccuracies. Yes. Yeah. No, I screamed. I, I rarely have I screamed at the television. It's like I mean, it was like you've got to be effing kidding me. It was bad. Um, so I noticed uh, from the surface web searching that I uh, found that they had a remote office, and. Uh, so I was like, okay, let me go. And I, and I talked to the client, and it's like I had to get permission. And this is the funniest part about it. It's like we'd already shown that we could get internal access to their, to their network. So the team was like really being really difficult with it. So they were like, okay, Jason, you can go test this, this remote site. But it's an office building with a whole bunch of other people in it. So you can only go in after hours. And since we don't own the building... You can't try to jimmy the doors. You can't try to use your cardboard trick and get into a door, which actually I did last night, which was awesome. And so you can't do any of those things. It's I like, thought I felt the presence <laughs> in my bedroom. <laughs> exactly. It's like you smell pretty when you sleep too. But uh, but also you go in and it's like and it's, it's my like, beard oil. I actually <laughs> use beard oil now. Is that what it is? Oh, it's wonderful, dude. It's so soft. It ahead, is. You can feel it. Oh Got no, it. I did feel it. it? It's no, like it's all good. Soft, so uh, this is one of the creepiest <laughs> interviews ever. It's like so. Then I go and they say, well, you can't only go after hours. You you, can, uh, you can't jimmy the doors. Uh, <laughs> this is the best part. And the, fr the doors of people going in and out, you can, you can go through one of those doors, but you can't talk to anybody coming in and out of the building because they may not be one of our employees. Mm. So you can't talk to them there. Then you can get into the public area of the office building, but you can't go anywhere else but the public area unless you can talk to a cleaning uh, person in a public area and have them... Uh, take you into your office, but you, and this is the, the best part of it. But when you talk to the cleaning crew person, you have to speak Spanish. No, I have to tell the, no, no, that was not appropriate. Uh, <laughs> th but they basically said, you have to tell the truth. You can't lie to the cleaning crew person. And then, yeah, if you can do all that, yeah, get in. I don't think I could lie in Spanish anyway. No, no I, I got I in. can't really. It's like, it was like, it took them a minute and 25 seconds to get from the car to the thing. And I've got it all on video. I actually showed the video. I mean, because yeah. I had it on my uh, spy watch at the time. You, had, so, you do have a James Bond spy watch. Oh, no, no. Watch this though. is my uh, Android watch uh, phone. Uh -huh. It's like a... Uh, it's a watch phone. Yes. It's a watch uh, Android, uh, outdated an uh, Android, but still, it's an Android phone. <laughs> but, uh, but so I actually talked to the cleaning crew and told her the exact 100% truth. I told her, I was like, look, I'm working late tonight. I was working late. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, I'm trying to get into the suite. It's like, uh, I don't have, Which my, was the I don't truth. have my badge. <laughs> exactly. I told her, I, told I her, don't have a badge. It's also the, the truth. truth. <laughs> I only wanted to do one thing, which was, you know, destroy their network. So it's like, I mean, I told her the complete truth the whole entire time. She let me in. I mean, and the looks on their Dude, face afterwards, awesome. like, I, I said, I did everything from your scope. And that's one of the things that bothers me and stuff, you know, getting me on a rant is that, um, 
clients, they want to give, when you're doing pen testing, they want to put you in scope. Yeah. You know, and their, and their scope is, an attacker's got an attack surface like this. Yeah, this yeah, is their yeah. scope. And they limit your scope. And then the, they say, well, we'll do it from 9 to 5. Yeah. Do it Monday through Friday. You do can only, only talk on to the cleaning server. person. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And they're like, well, you know why, Jason? It's, it's because crazy. you're a porn star. And oh. I think, I think that underneath. Did that video hit you? I think what? I think that you that I'm a pawn a pawn star too. Which oh, is, see, this is well, the magic very pawn nice. star. You like that, huh? Well played, <laughs> well played, sir. <laughs> well played. But uh, but that's so one of the maybe after me. the show you can be a pawn star with. Well, oh, hey, is that? Still, I, think, I think we're still taking. I think that's it. Like, oh, <laughs> sorry. But, Are those uh, things on? But but, <laughs> but it's nice to know that you care. Uh, <laughs> But, but, yeah, that's one of the things that got me. It's like, even with all those things, with a remote site, it's just not as secure. It's like in a headquarters, in a, in a main corporate environment, they understand security. They, they feel that their data needs to be protected because this is where all the decisions are made. But then they go to a remote site and a remote office, and they think geographically. Mm -hmm. We like to think humans, we like to think geographically that um, it's, oh, it's separated, so we're good. But you've got a direct connection from that remote office going directly into your internal network. So why do I have to try to break into that nice, uh, secured facility uh, headquarters when I still can be just like I'm sitting on that cube in your, off in your main <coughs> office from that remote site? So, yeah, yeah, it's the same thing we did the network penetration test, too. You go for the server that or the system that no one's paying attention exactly. to that's remote in some way, shape, or fashion, whether the technology is remote, it's not managed yeah. by them. You break that out into a physical realm, and yeah. it can be very effective. And how many it's, times it's, have you gone to a remote site and seen that an employee decide to put a Wi-Fi access point in? Or a yeah, because they're point on their in. own, right? Like, it, IT exactly. isn't there to call to come down and, and give them and help them with their wireless. So they're like, screw it. I'm going to buy do it myself. a $36 D-Link router, and I'm plugging it in. And they're not doing it to be malicious. They're not trying to be bad. They're mm. just wrong. And it's like, yeah. and so that's one of the key things. It's like, that's one of the things we see uh, doing that. So, so now... Uh, Joff, did you have some comments? Sorry. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I, a couple of things. You know, one, I, I was just thinking to myself that, that, that Jason very adequately, uh, more than adequately, played upon the compassion card too, right? Once you, once you get people to believe that they want to help you, I mean, there's almost nothing they won't do for you. It's like, you know, you get to a point where you've crossed that threshold and their lizard brain is engaged and they're just like, what else can I do for you? Here's oh, the door. No. Here's the paper. Here's the this. Here's the that. You know. <laughs> no, I, I call it. I actually. Uh, I'm so tired of the words. Uh, you know, advanced persistent threats that I actually changed it. I do basic adorable destruction. I'm just bad. <laughs> and it's like, and, and that's the main thing that I try to do is try to be adorable. It's like, oh yeah, you're. I was in Amon Jordan <clears throat> at a bank, an actual you know brick and mortar bank, plugging a. Uh, Hack five rubber ducky uh, USB drive into the computer, and the bank manager is telling me, "No, sir, you can't be doing that. You need to stop." And I'm smiling the whole time, going, "You're right. I shouldn't be able to do this." It's like, "Yeah, you should call somebody." It's like, "But hold on, I'm gonna do it again." Hold on, yeah, I think you should. You should be contacting someone. They should know about this. But you know, because I should be doing, because I'm supposed to do it. I don't know why you don't know that I'm supposed to be doing this. But you should contact somebody. Yeah, hold on, one more time. Hold on, four times. <laughs> And it's like and with a rubber smart. ducky. Yeah, with a rubber ducky. And the, the key thing, the only time they stopped me after doing those four was when I was behind the teller line and there was a stack of cash right by the computer I was trying to plug into. That's when she freaked because then she saw money. Mm. And I, I honestly, I told her, I was like, Oh, no, no, I don't care about the money. I just need to plug this in. It's like, I don't care about the money. That's not what I'm after. It's like, just let me plug this in real quick. And she's like, no, no, no. Was that like <laughs> the subsection in your report? <laughs> like penetration testing report, subheading, I pwned you four times with a rubber ducky. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, I think, man. I, I think what I hear Jason say is the secret here is to either, A, get people to really love you, which obviously Jason's very good at, or, B, really feel sorry for you, and then it totally hijacks that brain. Yeah. I have a lot of people that feel sorry for me, which, you know, they have, they have merit for. But uh, <laughs> so other uh, so, Jason, other than the trust issue, right? right. Like, are there technologies that like you mentioned wireless routers? Are there technologies that you notice are more prevalent in remote offices that might not be as prevalent in the, the base office? Uh, I think I mean, nine times out of 10, it's going to be uh, like a wireless access point or a mm. MiFi um connection yeah um it's that those are one of the biggest problems is because 
uh, you got to do work, and this is when, and this is an actual uh, case. I say, so an employee wants to do work, and they're in the conference room, and they can't get their emails, and they can't do their business because they're. So what do they do? They plug in a wireless access point to their internal network, mm -hmm. so their laptop can be connected to the internal network while they're doing email. They're not connected to the internet, so they're okay. But if you don't lock down your wireless access point, that means I'm in the parking lot on your internal network. Right. So, I mean, that's one of the problems is that a lot of these devices are, and I mean, you, you get so many times that you see a lot of these rogue devices aren't put in there by attackers. They're actually put in there by employees. Uh, they put in by people that are trying to maybe do something right, but they're doing it in the wrong way. And sometimes actually you find them from, you know, the bad guys coming in. Because I love dropping uh, pwn plugs. I love uh, dropping uh, Wi-Fi pineapples. I love, you know, dropping those little devices here and there. It's like I was just in uh, London a couple weeks ago doing a thing where we were doing a uh, Wi-Fi pineapple at the uh, London Eye. Then three minutes, I had 50 people connected to the pineapple. Wow. I mean, it was just like, bam. <coughs> Shippel, Shippel Airport, by the way. Very well respected uh, Wi-Fi connection uh, uh, for travelers because they ju that just kept popping up. Mm, interesting. Now, so how did, have you since you've come on? So first, I guess let's talk about. So why did you you were doing this before you right. joined? Pony yeah, Express. Well, yeah, I was doing. So why did you join uh, Pony Express? You know what really got me about Pony Express because I, I met uh, Paul and uh, Dave introduced me to Paul. Um, uh, I'm Pageant. smoking a cigar in honor of Paul uh, exactly. tonight. Yes. So he introduced me to, to Paul Pageant in, at DerbyCon mm -hmm. and, and, and Peter. And they started talking about, and I, and I knew him as a red team. So, you know, and I think one of the big things people know is that they see Pony Express, they see it from the red team, the really awesome tools that they, they brought out. But they started talking to me about what they're doing now, mm -hmm. what they're, they're, they're coming down the pipeline. And it's uh, the thing called Pone Poles. And yeah, because they started out as pure red team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's pure, and and it, it just goes to show this was like this company is like the just the 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 whole case study of what I talk about. That sometimes you need red team mentality and thinking to make good blue Dude team defense, products yeah. and good team. We've uh, always felt the same thing. That's why we developed offensive, offensive countermeasures, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's like so, and so they start talking about the Pone Pulse, which is a straight blue team defensive mechanism. But totally freaking awesome and built from the attacker's perspective. What do you need to defend against? What is one of the one things that you have a problem with when you're talking about uh, a company and you're trying to secure a company? It's like it doesn't matter how many of the blinky boxes you've got. You have to have visibility. You have to know what's going on on that internal network. And you may know what's going on in your headquarters, but you don't know what's going on in the remote offices. You don't know what's going on. And guess where an attacker is usually going to go after? Trust me, I know the mm, remote, the office. remote offices. Yeah. And so they're able to bring these sensors, <clears throat> these uh, Palm Pulse sensors, and put them into these remote offices, and they all come collective back with a nice little control panel that a, a blue team guy can look at and say, oh, why did Des Moines just bring up a wireless access point? Why mm -hmm. did Des Moines have a uh, Bluetooth keystroke logger going on? It's like they can look at these things, notice them, and be able to qual and contact people from that location, or they can actually use the sensor to be inside that part of the network and actually run and scans testing, yeah. and do some testing themselves to see where the vulnerability is. So, I mean, that is one of the key things. So that it's I a detection, but also uh, active, uh, like penetration oh, testing. Yeah, oh, it's so officers. much more. It's yeah. like it is so much more. It's really funny because it's the device that we've for years left behind. Right, exactly. In a pen test to give us remote access. But it's also, I can now reach out from a central point. And oh, go yeah, they've modified things. it, and they've done so much to, uh, work on it. It's just a great – I mean, it's really funny. They're about to be doing another massive launch on, on the Pong Pulse. And it's funny. It's like I've actually not been in them very often because it's like there's so much stuff going on I don't want to know about because I knew I'd blab it. <laughs> Instead, mm -hmm. you know, I, I get so excited. I'm like, oh, yeah, let me tell you about this. This is, like, really awesome. It's like – but they are doing some really great things uh, when it comes to, to what it's going to be. And it's, it's just awesome. And, I mean, I suck at sales. It's like I'm a lousy salesperson. It's like I'm excited about this stuff. It's like if I'm excited about it, it's like I'm going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and that's what they that's what they they liked, and that's how I got on there. And so because nice. you know, I told them, it's like, guys, I've always liked your products. I've always been a fan. You can tell by all the stuffed boxes that I did at the ballot boxes for trying to win a phone phone. Yeah. It's like you know, I've always stuffed the boxes, and it's like I, I mean, I would actually stuff the ballot boxes with like a hundred uh, entries, and then I would tweet going, "Oh, by the way, the the, the drawings canceled. Don't no need to fill it. No need to fill out the box anymore. It's okay." It's like I'm a horrible person. 
but uh, <laughs> but I got a punk phone, so you know. That's how they heard about you. <laughs> I, like, I think this is what it was. It's they're like, like, this Jason Street guy is oh, really interested in our products. <laughs> Maybe we should talk about hiring oh, him. <laughs> my gosh, I kid you not, at DerbyCon, I think it was three or something like that, uh, I got a pwn pad, and it basically they were saying at the drawing, they, they drew out Jason. Jason. It's like, because I like stuffed it, so it's like, Screw it. It's like, Jason, come get one. It's like, and you're not going to be able to enter in anymore. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> so I got a poem pad. It's like, and then they drew for another person. But it's mm-hmm. like, and they're like, okay, Jason, no more, no more drawings for you. <laughs> <laughs> I still stuffed about with, you know, other names. With other people's names, just for good I was just measure. waiting to hear yeah. Gregory D. Evans. Then I knew it would be mine. <laughs> it's like, yes. <laughs> it's like, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> so now what have you been doing with your, so now you work there. Right. And they give you stuff to play around with. Yes. So what have you done with your poem phone? And you have the Bluetooth adapter. Um, what uh, I'm going to do is actually I'm going to, uh, giving a talk in Orlando. Uh, and what I'm doing with that is I'm going to be showing a bunch of business people uh, their phones, uh, reading out their phones. It's like I, I did this at a, at a nice. talk in uh, Dominican Republic. Oh, my gosh, it was hilarious. I, I was doing this talk at the Dominican Republic, and I pulled that out, and I started listing people's names. Mm-hmm. And it was so funny because I didn't have to, like, as soon as I said the name, I could tell exactly in the audience where that person was. Because they're Cause like, they oh, look, yeah, the look in the face. Like, yeah. and like, and there was a couple laptops, and it, just, it was hilarious. So it's, like, it's just a, a visual aid of showing, like, your devices, your company, your remote offices, they're broadcasting. It's like, you know, it's and, ama- and I, who's I thought it was it amazing. I mean, we talked a lot about Bluetooth technology yeah. very early on in the show. Right. And when Pony Express, you know, gave me the Pwn phone, I was like, ah, what am I really going to find with the Bluetooth? I'm like, right. I'm going to try it. I was amazed. <laughs> exactly. <I found> m- <laughs> way more stuff than I did seven or eight years ago. Yeah. And um, I, I just thought it was really cool. It's amazing how you can map a room like that, though. Yeah. And, yeah. And Bluetooth, have you ever, have you gone into hospital with it yet? No. <laughs> it's like that. That'd be terrifying. Yeah. Because I know exactly it's, how bad it is. It's terrifying. I uh, yeah. my wife uh, just had surgery and I was in the hospital and uh, in her. Oh, room. you should have totally taken your phone. And, and, phone, and, dude. and the, the the machine was open and it's like, and I'm like. You, you're, you're sort of torn because there's an open, like, Windows 98 box right in front of you, but your wife's on the bed, so is this connected to her? Yeah, Can you mess yeah. with it? I know. It's like, I love you, honey, did, but... Did I make that life insurance payment? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like, I love you, honey, but I kind of pushed this button. It's just, just let me test something real quick. It's mm. like, so, yeah, so I'm not good in hospitals. Bad impulse control. control. <laughs> so, um... I really do know the feeling. With the, some of the other Pony Express technology, I wanted to ask you, uh, and I didn't prepare you for this question at all, but the other wireless technologies like Zigbee. Yes. I know we were talking about those, and I think They're uh, even it. Kevin, I think, said last time that you know it's Linux. You can do some of that stuff now because it's yeah. open source and you can make it work. But have you started looking into this? Because yes. I run smart things at yes. home. Carlos does as well, and that does Z-Wave and Z-Wave, just Z-Wave and Zigbee, right, Carlos? Uh, yeah, Siwe and Zigbee, and the next version will also do Bluetooth. Okay. This is the uh, this is the unofficial stuff that I can't talk about because I'm sure they're going to get upset about me because I'm. But I did talk to. Yeah, don't spill uh, the beans. Exactly. Dude, I did but, talk yeah. to Tim. I did talk to Not Kevin. I mean, the, the, the Vermont engineering team is like some scary, scary hacker dudes and stuff. You know, it's like very intelligent guys, and we actually yeah, talked about and some now of that. my buddy Rick Farina. Yes, and Rick on, Farina. Yes, Rick is on your team of course, as well. You know, much love to Rick. You know, I was, like, I was happy. I was it's like, uh, but yeah, we did a conference call, and I'm looking. At it, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, the, and I saw. Rick. I'm like, that makes like perfect sense now. Yeah, I'm like, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's we great. got some scary talent there, and uh, they were talking about. So unofficially, they were they were talking about that's some of the stuff they're doing. And one of the things Dave said, uh, you know, the CTO of the company, he was like, in the founder of the company, he was saying, I'm going to start doing so many new things uh, with these devices and mm-hmm. adding some more uh, technology into it. So uh, I can't be any specific, but I did mention Zigbee because I thought that would be awesome to start doing into it. So yeah, and I think that's going to be where it's going. Uh, it's actually going to be. Uh, potentially showcased on a segment airing on April 2nd on the show. We will actually yes. have Rick and I think yes. Dave, Rick and at least Rick. I'm at not sure if Dave, like Dave maybe, will come yeah. to, but Rick um, and some other folks from Pony Express are going to come on on April 2nd and talk about a research project they've been doing. Exactly. Um, uh, 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 along They're going to knock your socks lines. off with some yeah, of that I'm, d- I'm just like, really the, cool. I'm just like the, the lighthearted conversation and rambling and banter and stuff. You know, They're going to actually give you some like really cool, yeah. juicy stuff. So that'll be stuff. happening April 2nd. Uh, so make sure you tune into the show on April 2nd. You'll find out more yeah. information. I'm just and here for the awkward hug opportunity. Yes. So. I'm, I'm glad you are. <laughs> um, so let's see. The There is a survey that you can fill 
fill out and a contest associated with that. So if you go fill out a survey, you can win a Palm phone. You can win one of these devices. They're freaking awesome. Lots of fun. You can fill out the survey. The link is in the show notes. Um, it's not a, a very user-friendly link. But if you go to the uh, episode 408 in the wiki, yeah. go to the guest interview with Jason Street. There's a fill out this survey and qualify to win a free Pwn phone. Yeah. Fill out that survey. I think they're only asking five questions. Yeah, and Pony Express actually uh, pulled out a link on that, too. And yeah. I already checked. They, they, they blacklisted my email address. I tried to fill out the thing, and it's like... They they blacklisted my blacklisted my email address. It's like, I was like, man, I, I can't help it. I gotta, you know. <laughs> Even your aliases, <laughs> hacker love pony at Gmail, exactly. or something like, like that. Like, yeah. <sighs> uh, so this is for a pwn phone. You fill out the survey. You're automatically entered and qualified to win a free pwn phone. So we'll have to uh, announce the winner on an upcoming show as well. Definitely. But that's a that's a great opportunity. It's a really super cool device. So all you can do is fill out a short. Survey and you qualify to win one of these bad boys. Check out the that's the Bluetooth adapter. I've got the Wi Fi adapter, I got the Cat 5 adapter. It's yeah, it comes with all those adapters as well. So, super cool device. And uh, well, Jason, thanks for coming on. So, you're gonna stick around for stories. We're gonna talk about stories. Yeah, you got a lot of fun things to talk if you about. You let me next. ramble. Yeah, we're I'm gonna let too. you do even more rambling. Awesome, actually. I, I'm just glad that I didn't have to virtually teleport into the to the studio. I'm just you're glad actually I'm here, 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 isn't it? So it's awesome, awesome being here. Yes. yes. So, with that, we're gonna take a short break, come back, and talk about our stories for this week. Yay, yay, phone phone. <laughs> 